imitating Hedgehog again. Attack! I finally found him. The Drift Trigger. Hello everyone, I finally did it. I finally found the issue that has been haunting every Nintendo gamer out there, and well, even Nintendo too. After thousands of attempts, opening and closing my Joy-Cons god knows how many times, and having the drift returned several times, I have successfully fixed them permanently. And in this video I'll show how you can do it, as well as some insights on the Joy-Cons analog sticks and what's the real cause of the drift. But before that, I would like to ask you something. This is a new channel I'm creating and I need any help that I can get to get new subscribers. So I would appreciate if you hit the subscribe button, it will help me a lot. And let's make it a deal, if your Joy-Con starts to drift again, you can feel free to unsubscribe. First, I'll talk about how I achieved this result, but if you want to go straight to the fix, you can jump to the time listed here. So, as most Switch owners, my Joy-Con started to drift and I started to look around for possible ways of fixing it. And I tried everything, blowing compressed air, cleaning it, wiping it with isopropyl alcohol, contact cleaner, WD-40, seriously, I tried everything. And initially, it seems to fix the drift, but after a few weeks, it always come back. The least effective way to fix this right now is to replace your analog sticks or send your Joy-Cons to Nintendo, as they are now fixing Joy-Cons for free. That will solve the issue, but eventually your Joy-Cons will start drifting again, because you didn't fix the cause of the drift, you just replaced it. And on top of that, it is reported that if you have special Joy-Cons and send them to Nintendo, they cannot guarantee you that they will send the same Joy-Cons back, so you can send your uh, special edition Zelda Joy-Cons and receive boring grey Joy-Cons back. In my case, I couldn't even send my Joy-Cons to Nintendo because I have installed custom shells on mine, so I ended up voiding any kind of warranty. Uh, so I decided to, instead of replacing the analogs, I would look around and see if I could find the cause of the drift. There are a lot of assumptions of why the Joy-Con drift. Uh, some say that it's a bad connection with the antennas, which is not true, since the Switch Lite also drifts, and those have permanently attached Joy-Cons with no wireless communications whatsoever. Some say that it happens because of the flat cable that connects the analog stick to the motherboard. This was my first attempt to fix it. I tried to stick a piece of paper on the top of the flat cable to ensure that it would connect more tightly to the motherboard. And still, the drift returned after some weeks. With this out, I went to another possible cause, that is dust getting inside the analog mechanism. This is partially true, as opening the analog stick and clean it got rid of the drift for a while. That is also the reason why sometimes blowing compressed air solves the drift. But even if it works, it's only temporary. But then I started to look, and even when the drift returned and I opened it to clean it again, I noticed that there wasn't any dirt like on the first time, and the drift happened with the same intensity. Why only the Joy-Con has drift? Why doesn't the PS4, Xbox One, and even my 20 years old GameCube controllers doesn't have? Well, the PS5 seems to have the drift, but I don't have a PS5 now, so maybe that's a thing for a future video. Some YouTubers like Spawn Wave pointed that the drift could happen because of the wear of the graphite pads. But again, this is not true, as all the other consoles use the graphite pads too. And then it finally hit me that other portable consoles with small analog sticks never had drift. 3DS, the PSP, the PlayStation Vita, they didn't have drift as bad as Joy-Cons. So I started to look at repair videos for these consoles, and one video in particular caught my attention. Uh, this video from Fantastic Quack. Uh, it shows that in the Vita stick, the graphite pad responsible for reading the analog inputs is located on the side of the Joy-Con. And guess what, the PS4, the GameCube, Xbox, 
All other consoles also have the reading mechanism on the side, but not the Joy-Cons. So I started to look on the Joy-Con sticks and its different models to try to pinpoint the cause. There are many analog versions out there with slightly different components inside, but they all work the same and they are all susceptible to drifting. So I opened the analog sticks and took a look at them and here's all how it works. When you move the analog stick, these metal pieces rub against the graphite pads and this is how the switch knows the position of the analog sticks. And as this gets inside this part, it will compromise the readings and thus you get the Joy-Con drift. Now check this out, this is my drifting Joy-Con and look what happened here. See? I didn't even touch the analog sticks and the drift disappeared. It seems that increasing the pressure in the Joy-Con makes the drift disappear. If I keep holding, the drift is gone, but as, as soon as I released it, the drift comes back. So. How can we make this pressure constantly and keep the drift away from the Joy-Con? Here is the fix for this. So as you can see right now, this Joy-Con is completely free from the drift. It's weird, it seems like adding a tiny piece of paper or card with around 1mm can stop the drift completely. And I can say for sure because this Joy-Con has not drifted again and it's been about 2 months that I fixed it. And I had drift on both my Joy-Cons and both of them got the same fix and they are completely okay now. So. What really is happening here? Why the piece of paper stops the drift? Let me show you. Here's the analog stick. And take a note on this screw hole for later. We need a little bit more of detail, so I'll show you the pattern pictures. And let's take the upper plastic part out. Here is the metal pieces that rub on the pads below. And here's the side view. You see, when you buy a new Joy-Cons, these metal flaps hold the analog very tightly, but with time and the action of pressing on the analog sticks allied with the metal springs inside, makes this metal section more loose. This in turn gives enough space for the metal prongs to lose contact with the pads, make the reading imprecise and thus giving you the drift. This coupled with dust, the problems get even worse. So by adding a small thick piece of paper, I would recommend a business card or something with the same thickness, just enough to get more pressure and restore the contact with the pads. With this, even if your analog has a lot of dirt under the pads, the pressure itself will be enough so that the prongs will brush away the dirt with the movement, and then your Joy-Cons won't drift anymore. There you go Nintendo, I fixed your problem. And here's the point of failure. You can easily change this by adding a screw that will hold the metal plate together with the upper plastic part. As currently right now, this screw is the only thing that holds the upper plastic piece in the Joy-Con board. Or maybe you could add an emboss on the midsection of the Joy-Con shell to simulate the pressure of the card. And that's it. Since this is a relatively easy fix, you can try it by yourself on your Joy-Cons and check it out if your drift will really disappear like mine did. Oh, and by the way, this fix should also work on a switch light. They are a bit tricky to tear down, but the analog stick is the same, so I believe that the same card trick might do. I appreciate your comments and feel free to subscribe on my channel or support me on Patreon. See you next time!